Okay, welcome back. Hello, everybody. Hello. Another episode of Go To Realtors Podcast, Investment Realtors Podcast. That's us. Lewis, Justin, Justin Lewis. So today we're going to take some time to answer some of the uh, questions that we've gotten in. Yep. I know we kind of touch on them throughout, but this video is designed to specifically ask a question on uh, commissions. Yeah. And just kind of the breakdown. I mean, we always kind of get it all the time where people don't really kind of understand who's paying what, yeah. how do commissions work what's kind of the fee structure what's industry standard mm -hmm. what do a lot of fly by night agents do do you get what you pay for exactly exactly so i guess the first one will be uh in regards to the commission uh what is commission what's the industry standard on what someone's going to pay so i guess every area in the gta has a different kind of like average commission sale yes. in our area the total commission is well we can't even say what the total commission is but we can say the Average offering commission mm -hmm. that we see in our area is 2.5%. So that means that for any buying agent that comes to this listing, yes. they are paid 2.5% commission on that. Now, we don't know what that individual selling agent negotiated with the seller for their end. What do you mean? Okay, so this is this is how it usually works. Mm -hmm. So you sit down for a listing appointment with okay. a seller. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And Mr. and Mrs. Like, Smith. Listen, I like the price you're giving me, but what do you charge me? Exactly. So the question is, how much total commission are they paying? So everybody has a different fee structure. Mm -hmm. You could come in and give different options with different amounts of service. Okay. Right? You could do that. You could come in and be right away a discount agent that just gives like a flat fee, very small percentage. Gotcha. You could be somebody who um, feels like they're worth a lot more and they charge a higher commission. Hmm. Right? I okay. guess the best thing that you should ask somebody who's mm -hmm. your client is – What's your goal when yes. it comes to take home amount? Okay. Like, is your goal to get the cheapest agent? Mm -hmm. Is your goal to get the most money in your pocket at the end of the transaction? Yeah. Is your goal? That's a little bit of thunder. So it's, it, it's, it's thunder and lightning outside uh, pretty severe right now. And uh, we could hear the lightning and well, we could hear the thunder through the doors. We're scared. Maybe we should go under the table. Yeah. No, well. Not yet. Okay. One more. So what you're saying is the fee for service. The fee for service. Can have different structures to it. There's kind of an industry standard of what it is offered. generally. What's offered in this area. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean all agents abide by it nope. or that they pay that out. Exactly. Exactly. So, okay. so like I was saying, so you would ask them what's your goal in yeah. terms of commission and, and what you want to get at the end of the day. So our team, we yeah. offer... Um, a full service 5% total. So it's 2.5 offered to any buyer's agent that comes in mm -hmm. and then 2.5 on the listing side. So two, so fee for service is 2.5 one side, 2.5 the other side, which gives us a total of five. five but it's not that one million. agent's going, yeah, here's my 5%. It's it, 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 They could, if like then you negotiate within that. So you could have a negotiation where if you help out on the buying side, you could get a commission cut or if you bring your own buyer, to oh, okay. it, right? There's other incentives you could do. But what you have to ask yourself is, um, are you getting what you're paying for? Of course. And what exactly are you paying for? Yeah. So we hear examples all the time of like, well, I know a guy who could give me 1% commission fee. Oh, wow. Good. Which in your head, you're like, okay, 1% of a million dollars, let's say is $10,000. Yeah. So I could save $10,000. Mm -hmm. on this transaction. But we don't know is his number one is track record. Mm -hmm. You don't know what his past sales are. Mm -hmm. You don't know what his ability to negotiate on your behalf is. Well, I would argue if he just pretty much gave up his fee, yeah. he's got no problem giving up your hard earned house of what it should be and says, Yeah, okay, we'll take this little ball offer because whatever. Exactly. If he can if he can negotiate his own value or his worth, yeah. how is he gonna negotiate on behalf of your biggest investment of your life? That's fair. So I mean at the end of the day, it's like like our our uh, our mentor always used to say, when you go for surgery, mm-hmm do you go in the hospital and say, hey, can I get the cheapest doctor? Yeah, I do. Or do you, <laughs> <laughs> or do you go in and say, who, who's got the best track record? Exactly. Who's got the best success rate? Who's got this? Who's got that? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So that's one thing you got to ask. And and obviously every every listing agent or every agent offers different things. We yeah. offer full service. Yeah. We bring in like Stage, repair people, clean, stagers, paint. cleaners, yeah. painters. Yeah. We, we go above and beyond. We get our 5% worth, right? 
it, it's it, mm-hmm. we believe we add enough value that we get that money back for the sellers. And when you say we get the five percent, it's not that we on the listing side get the five. It's no, two point five. But you pay five percent exactly. We're doing pretty much. They argue that the listing agent's the one that's kind of. It, it's funny because when you're the listing side, they say mm-hmm. that the buying agent's the one working hard. And the listing agent doesn't do anything. And then when you're on the listing side, it's, it's vice versa. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody's doing their their own. I mean, to take a house um, to like kind of listing quality, you're not just going to slap over some pictures on your iPhone of a house no. that's dirty. When you're a full service realtor like we are and like what our team does and what we believe in, they're not just um, like re- they're, they're not just transactions. They're relationships we're building yeah, because exactly. it's, it's much more. We're helping these people with their biggest one of their biggest investment assets. So we always do everything kind of properly and we treat people how we would want to be treated. Yeah. Keeping them in the loop, keeping yeah. them informed. Like, I mean, we're there when you call. Yeah. We don't put you on hold. We don't, at the end of the day, if you got one, let's say you have uh, one listing mm-hmm. at full commission Yeah. or you have five listings at one fifth of the commission. Yeah. Now you got to spread your time to these five and you're not giving them your full attention because, because you're not getting full price because you're not getting full price. And like, is that wrong to yeah. say it is? Well, that's, that's the thing, right? You kind of get what you're paying for. Exactly. You're getting somebody who's got to spread himself thin and he's, his margins are so slim on yeah. those listings. He might not offer staging. He might yeah. not offer photography. He might yeah. not offer this. And when it comes out to negotiations, is he going to just be like, ah, eh, whatever, first offer in, let's get it out of the exactly. way because he's got like a conveyor belt system exactly. going here. Exactly. It, it's not the the quality, it's the quantity. He's got to he's got to sell five yeah. times as many listings to make up the value of getting one at full price. Yeah, I guess the biggest thing that we try to explain and and try and teach clients when they're kind of being short-sighted in their opinion or not opinion on what they want to go with is you get what you pay for it like always, anything else in always life. in life so if you want a full-time realtor that's not doing this part-time that's going to spend the money up front mm-hmm. because i mean at the end of the day that's another side to it too the money that's spent up front doesn't mean you're getting that back so if you're three five thousand dollars just to get this house to market and it doesn't sell and then what oh your seller says you know what we're gonna wait okay well you don't we don't come back and say hey we, here's this invoice five, yeah. exactly so to to Get these houses at a certain level to market them properly, show them properly, get the full amount. You need a full service realtor, not, you know, fly by night, kind of here today, gone tomorrow, just pumping them like a conveyor belt. Yeah. What's the old saying? Like if if your clients have to reach out to you, you didn't communicate with them enough. You Mm -hmm. think that these guys, you think even if you call them, they're going to call you back? They they have... They're too spread thin. They they have they have a margin that's so slim. They have to get through all these clients. Exactly, and right. their their rationale or the reasoning behind it is like, oh, well, you save money. You save money, so this is the the saved money approach. Which is funny. It's like one percent of a million dollars is ten grand. Drop in a bucket. It's when a drop in the bucket. Hundreds of thousands. We say it all the time. And if you have a good agent, you don't think he can negotiate you ten grand off the price of that house, exactly. if not more. Exactly. So really, you wanted to save ten thousand dollars, but really they sold your house forty thousand under. So yeah. okay, you saved thirty. Whereas Mr. Smith, who's full service, that you paid the thirty, then got you another thirty off. So yeah. really, it's a wash, and everybody's happy. It's a wash, and you and you know you're not getting sued because things are getting done. Properly. Yeah, yeah. So which brings us to another point, which that's the selling side. What about the buying side? Mm-hmm. So when you're when you have clients, right, right? If you don't have an agent and you're just calling the listing agent yeah. for anything you want to see. In theory, that should be fine. Yes. But the problem is, especially with houses, even even our most recent one, by the time this um, potential client reaches, first of all, finds the agent, mm-hmm. gets a hold of the listing agent, mm-hmm. reaches out to them to set up a showing, and then once that showing's set up, and then they have to see it, and maybe they want to see it again, that listing agent's busy doing other things. Yeah. Right? Like you... You might not get in in time, and let's say the house sells before you even get in, which has happened quite. Which a bit. happens all the time. Yep. Now, what do you do? Now you lost out on the house, yeah, because you don't have an agent working for you on the buying side. Absolutely. You're relying on a listing agent, yep. who if he gets in ten offers, like you're you're so low on the priority list, you might not get a chance to see the house because they're looking out for the seller, not the buyer. Ultimately, they don't know you. You're a random buyer. And I think what a lot of the general public doesn't know is when we upload a listing to MLS. It usually takes a few hours before it goes to realtor house signal. Yep. So that let's say four hour window of 
a client that has a realtor already mm -hmm. looking out, has already found it, sent it to them, booked a showing. Yeah, got as in. As opposed to us that we're dealing on the listing side where, you know, Mr. Smith calls us at six o'clock after it's already been live, after there's already been, yeah. let's say, four showings on the property and says, hey, can I look at it? And we go, oh, there's already three offers and we're presenting within the next hour. Yeah, we and we personally can't get in to show you because like, we're Ooh. engaged with other clients. Exactly. Like it, yeah. it's, it becomes it becomes a point where you're you're gonna miss out on things and properties that you really like absolutely because you don't want to commit to a realtor whose job mm -hmm. is to be on top of things and get you in right away yeah i agree so what's the point you miss out on things right so our suggestion is for your own sake yeah find a buying agent that you trust yeah interview and a bunch right selling agent both don't get caught up on the fee get caught up on their track record what they do how they communicate with exactly you. Exactly. So I think we'll leave him with that. That was uh, good question. a good, good, good question. That was from good breakdown. Joanne. So thank you, oh, Joanne. Joanne. Thank, thank you, you Joanne. Joanne. We're going to keep going with these. Uh, we'll bring you another one next week. Like, comment, let us know. Send us in some more emails. We prefer when you guys comment because when you email into us, not all the viewers can see it. Only us. So Only us. Which is, which is important. Obviously, you want fine. us to see us, but we want everybody to see. This is a tight-knit community. Yes. So thank you, guys. And bye-bye, uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.